Hey everyone and uh, good evening if you are in Nairobi. Uh, good morning, uh, whether I think you're in the East Coast, in the US, or wherever you are in this world, welcome. This is a podcast for Nehemiah Project International, uh, hosted by Patrice. And uh, today I have the privilege to host and uh, so we want to welcome you. Please post this. Um, welcome. Let's let's have some fun. Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, we're digging deep in the conversation about how do we develop consumer-led strategies. And uh, uh, with us, our guest today is uh, the man himself, Gerald Owino. Uh, Gerald, hi, and welcome to the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing okay. Asante. Yeah. Are you are you I ready to rumble? You in, um, in French, but Asante, <laughs> you know Jumbo, I trust you guys are well. It's a pleasure to be here, Frank. Very good and welcome. We are so pleased to host you today. Right. And uh, just to let you guys know a bit about Gerard. Gerard is the CEO for the Grass Company. Uh, this organization has been existing for I think about thirteen to fifteen years. I think fifteen years. Uh, Gerard himself has been in the space around marketing and consumer uh, consumer insight for about 20 years now. Uh, Gerard is a guru in this area, and you're going to enjoy the gems that he is going to be dropping today. Um, so, Gerard, you can see that we are bringing the the expert himself uh, into the into the studio today. So, welcome, man, and I hope you. you're ready to to drop them. Thank you for the pressure. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, my brother. Um, so uh, viewers out there, please feel free to ask questions, uh, to make your comments, to share. And we are so pleased that you're joining with us as well today. So we look forward to a great time together. Jared, uh, we're going to just hit it off with you. And the first question I just want to ask you is, tell us about Jared. Um, why is this conversation even precious or important to you uh, as you tell us who you are? And yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple man. Um, so Gerald Oveno, my name, born and raised in Kenya. Um, grown up in a middle middle class home. Um, and really what I enjoyed also about, or what I still enjoy about being middle class is that all the time middle class, you can always go up this way, see what's, what's happening with the bougie kids, but you can always go down this way and see what's happening with the other kids. So yeah. grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in a middle class home, being able to observe a lot of things um, around me. Um, you know, I'm in my 40s, um, still young, I'm excited about um, the, the space I am in, I am, well, what can I say? Mm -hmm. So I've spent my, my life uh, largely in marketing, um, excited about what's going on with consumers. And, and I think I remember at one point when I was in advertising, I remember we were making a lot of decisions concerning the consumers. And at one point I asked myself, have we really taken time to go and ask this consumer what's going on? You know, have we taken time to really understand them and their context and and then brought them to the boardroom? So many years ago, I started asking myself, really, are we giving justice to to the products we're doing, to the budgets we're spending in marketing? Are we really doing justice by being authentic in how we are then engaging our target market? So, um. So that has been my background and getting into now interest around consumers and and so, but otherwise I'm a family man. I have a three amazing kids. Um, um, yeah, you know it, it's very it's very hard to talk about myself. I, I, it's a good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've 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 known you a long time. Oh, uh, there, are few, there are a few men like you. Because so, we're always talking about other people, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, wow, that's a good. But I, I think I'll write that down next time so that I'm a bit more. Um, 
these are the five things you want to know about Gerald. <laughs> but there's one thing I do enjoy about myself. Yeah. I do enjoy a good laugh. So, you know, anytime you have a good joke, it's got to be a good joke. Uh, you know, I'm always game for that. Otherwise, yeah, just a bit about myself, yeah. Well, uh, so guys, uh, if you're just joining us, we have an incredible guest, Jared Owino, who was also one of our guests at the Nehemiah Week last week. And we will be engaging with him now a bit uh, in details about Consumer Insight. But before you go into that, Jared, we were with you in Washington last year. Um, and we were all geared up to go to Mexico. That didn't happen. We ended up doing Nehemiah Week uh, digitally. I hope we're still going to Mexico. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> so we have to tell Patrice uh, your invitation needs to keep standing. Eh? Um, so yeah. you better perform well in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> pressure. Um, but tell me, um, what was your what was your take about this week, Nehemiah week? How did that go? How was it different? Uh, what are the things that were a big takeaway for you and or areas we can improve as Nehemiah? Wow. Well, I, I think bottom line is um, we all had to adapt and figure out how to move from a physical to to more technologically driven kind of space. So. I'd say it was a shift in mindset, a shift in what we had to do. I mean, you're you're at a session, but you still have to dress up. I mean, that's still, you know, you're out there physically, you know, but you still have to show up. So I think we're still in the process of adapting and getting to go into that digital space, which is fine. Uh, so for me, the move around getting technology as uh, into technology and adopting it is is what was different from last year. And um, I think I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, uh, nonetheless, I'm still more, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, person on person, you know, physical contact, a high five, you know. So as much as we're making that transition, I think there's always still that space for the physical contact. Physical contact will never stop. We'll always be human beings. We're not machines. So we'll always have that time for physical contact. Um, one of my challenges I know uh, when I was, uh, you know, through the session was how do I network, mm. you know? And, you know, there's some people who are very good at this, you know, the early adopters and, you know, blah, 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 blah. you know, so I must say on that area, you know, going to this, this area, going to that space, I think Patrice and team have developed such good technology. It, it only deserves us to really apply ourselves, but really um, I found that then I, I didn't do very well in that space, being able to network with people and, and get to know people a bit more. So that is one area I would do better myself, but also I think an opportunity for the whole um, you know, program so that we in that one week, we're able to integrate a lot more. So that's what I'd say. Hmm. Very good, very well said. So you are a speaker in a global mm -hmm. conference, my friend. I don't, I, can't, I don't even know how many countries were involved. We had right. people from Asia, people from Eastern Europe, West, uh, Western Europe. Right. Uh, we had people from all parts of the US. We had people from Africa. Um, and you are right at the heart of it as a speaker. Uh, as you said, a young Kenyan guy, uh, right at the heart of the big shots. How did that feel? Wow, I mean, I think it must, uh, you know, it, it was quite nice. I think I, I did feel privileged. I did feel honored to be in that presence. I think what Patrice, Gina, and the team are really doing is, is amazing. You know, building businesses one at a time, you know, across the continents. So I think it was a really interesting exposure. It's something that I'd like to do again, given the opportunity because I am now also growing myself. You know, no one has made it, no one has figured out life. So mm. this was a learning moment for me to be able to speak to different people, different scenarios and, 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 and stay relevant. So that was a learning. Oh, very good. Well, just before we hit into the consumer conversation, I'm gonna uh, ask you a very interesting question. I, I remember once, you were feeling that you want to grow your business, was thinking to go to Strathmore and do all that. And then the Lord said to you to go to Bible school. Mm -hmm. 
um, tell tell us about uh, tell us a bit about that journey. How did that end up being a blessing to your business? How did that change you? Because right. I think anytime anyone wants to go to 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 build his business, they go to to a professional school, um, and then you seem to go elsewhere. Tell us a bit about that journey. That's a good question, um, Frank. I, I must say that at that point, you know, this is just about maybe five years ago, if I'm not wrong. And I mean, I was looking at my business and thinking, I need to do something different. I need to spice this up. I need to take it to another level. And, and I thought, okay, what do I do? Do I go back to school and, and start studying? Do I, you know, I needed just to really um, know what I'm doing and take this thing to another level. And obviously, like you say, this the idea is to figure out, okay, who's doing that is interesting. I, I had some colleagues of mine uh, in business had been through to Strathmore Business School, and I thought, wow, maybe that's the way to go. Um, but then, you know, again, because my life is not outside my faith, the question was to ask God, really, who, who if he is the one who gives me the power to make wealth, uh, where should I go? Should I go to Peter and Jane or should I go to back to him? And so the decision was then to look at what is God saying and where can I learn what God is saying? And I didn't know too many places, but I was lucky in Jesus' name. I was very lucky. A friend of mine who had known for years had just come back into the country and she was setting up a Bible school. And it was exciting because I now then had to go into the process of Bible school. Then come another friend of mine who has this idea around Nehemiah, you know, called Frank, and he's starting this biblical entrepreneurship. And I said, okay, let me also submit myself to that and go through understanding what are the fundamentals that God desires me to have in business. So the biblical entrepreneur was, was a way to make me look at things in a, in a, in a not a worldly perspective, but not outside the world either, but with a God lens. Like what does God expect me to do with my business? Okay, um, maybe say, Gerald, you, you want to grow your business. Yes, but are you tithing? If I'm the one who gives you the power to create wealth, I mean, why don't you honor me as well? Anyway, so it was just going back to learn the biblical principles from Bible school, from business, from uh, uh, BE as well, um, to actually get me rooted and, and, and really grounded to know how I can move forward. So when I look back now, I feel much more confident about who I am and where God has called me to go in terms of being able to leave an imprint in this in this life right now here. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Hey guys, I hope you are listening to, to us and you're enjoying this. Uh, we are talking to Jared Oino, CEO of The Grass Company. And uh, we, we are enjoying to listen to what his journey has been like, uh, part of it, and how God has brought him here. It's interesting that um, sometimes if you're going to go up, you first go down. And so mm -hmm. at the heart, in my view, of great entrepreneurship journeys is personal growth. Because it's the entrepreneur who's changed that can change his business. And so, Gerard, we are celebrating you. Thank you very much for really coming here and sharing your heart. Okay, consumer-led strategies. Very simple. Today, I'd like us to speak as simply as possible. So, mm. question for you. What is this consumer insight world? What does that look like? What does that mean? Um, there is a huge comment that you like to make. Um, uh, that let me read it uh, for the time for the first time the consumer is boss which is fascinating frightening scary and terrifying because everyone uh, because everything we used to know everything we used to do will no longer work um, Kevin Roberts former CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi uh, Saatchi and Saatchi I don't know if that's how you say it 
Um, yeah, so what is consumer insight and what is this power that the consumer has, has now? Right. I mean, if I, um, if I look back at how we grew up, we had singular brands. You had one fuel brand, you had one you know, computer brand, you had one toothpaste, so to speak. You know, we had very dominant brands. Uh, you had one, you know, margarine, you had one very dominant. And the reality is that that was then. Things have changed now, where we have now our consumer, you and I, who are more switched on. We have a lot happening in our landscape. We have more choices, for example. We have more knowledge about what's going on. So because we are not that consumer, and we are now what we call a prosumer, who is a more active consumer, then, then being consumer-led and thinking consumer insight then becomes more relevant now. If you look at the world as it was 100 years ago, how was the word of God taught? Um, you know, your guess is as good as mine. I was not there. But look at how the word of God is taught today. You mean today you have how many version of Bibles? How much um, how much cross referencing do you have to do to really understand or get better knowledge about what what is being said in the Word of God? By the time a preacher is there, he's not just telling you, "Give me the seven steps." No, you want more. So the dynamics around the consumer has definitely changed, and it's keeping changing. Of course, there are things that stay the same, but there are also things that quite dynamic. And so for us, what we said is that if you're really going to make an impact in, in business, make an impact in, in what you're doing, then we want to know the person you're targeting to engage with, whether you're a pastor, a teacher, um, you know, you own a school, you know, whether you are selling shoes or a lotion, you have to know what's going on in my world. I mean, gone are the days when I was not as relevant, when that monopoly could just put a product in the store. Now you ha I have uh, all this knowledge, so I, you really want to know what's happening in my world. So uh, bottom line, it's an inquiry that we have to make. I mean, insights are, are quite, it's a science, it's, a, it's, a, it's an art, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be at. But I think the, the consumer is boss because, because that's the question you asked me, isn't it, uh, mm. Frank? Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm going to decide where I'm going to spend my money. Yeah. So now you have to come to me yeah. and I have to choose, am I taking you or somebody else? And now therefore you have to be more relevant to me. I was laughing at a friend of mine uh, just today. I was asking myself, how, which brand has talked to me in this season of COVID? Who has, who has called me? Who, who has done a research? You know, who has engaged with me? You know? So mm -hmm. I feel that it is important that people get to know who their consumer is and then to be able to make then better decisions, mm -hmm. be able to know what is going on with you and I, so that we can actually innovate ideas and solutions that will be relevant, you know. Yeah, wow, wow. Here we're getting to the reasons why uh, this whole conversation about consumer becoming boss. And if the consumer is boss, then we've got to listen as entrepreneurs, otherwise you become irrelevant. And thank you, guys. Thank you, um, uh, everyone on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, we are coming to you live from our studios in Nehemiah Project um, International. Thank you very much. We, I see you, Coletta. Coletta is saying, what's up? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you for uh, saying that you're enjoying the conversation. Uh, Stephen Muradi saying, I'm following this thing, I'm following this thing. Uh, Zef, uh, Bible School, Gerard, that was a huge step. Um, yeah, how do you make business happen from, from that? So, Zef, uh, thank you for joining us this, this evening. We are still going to throw some tough uh, conversations here. Um, so, Gerard, I'm going to come back to you. But... Uh, uh, you, you've, you've begun to talk about that. So I'm going to read you um, this statement. Brands no longer dictate. They must collaborate. I want you to think of an example, a real-life example that you have experienced, you have led, 
that shows how we can collaborate as 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 entrepreneurs or as um, as brands. How exactly do we begin to collaborate with our consumers? So this is insight. How do we look for it? You you began to talk about that, and we're gonna go through your process of doing it. But after that, um, the question I'm asking is, how do we begin this journey of collaborating? All right. Uh, Frank, that's a very, very loaded, and um, I don't know where to start, but I'll start somewhere. Just so, yes, knock it off the park. So, because you asked me for an example of a brand that I've been able to work with where we collaborated in. So for some of the brands, we would not be able to talk about, but then let me talk about. Let me say, you know, this, and I'll always like to give this a couple of examples. Uh, let me start with Levi Strauss. And I give this example where there's a jeans being made for a particular consumer in Africa, but the jeans doesn't quite fit. And I don't know if the, man, if the owner of the, you know, the brand knew about it, but just by taking time to understand what is a process I go as a as a woman in Africa to buy jeans and the process of wearing it and and what do I feel about it? Um, and we talked about the fact that you know the particular gr uh, group of girls that we talked to in, this, in South Africa were able to uh, they were proud of their calves and therefore needed a particular part of type of jean that would work to fit them. So when you talk about consumer insight, it could be across category across. Uh, product, service, and you know what have you. So I really like that example because it told me that I need to spend more time to listen to the consumer myself. So when I when I when I come to this country in Kenya, I, I remember um, having you know some consumers, and we were talking. We've developed a relationship with a certain group of consumers. We call them grasses. And the grasses in Kenya are across you know age and gender. You look at anything from um, 16 to 20 to 25 for the for the youth um, and the much older, younger adults, etc. We've been able to really grow a network of youth, women, and those at the bottom of the pyramid. So by taking time to listen to them, um, we've seen many things. Let me give an example of one, which I always found an interesting, simple example. We were hanging out with uh, our young guys, and um, and we start talking about transit, and in the Talking about transit, we realize that indeed they do spend a lot of time in transit. So that is, you know, we know that. But I didn't realize how much it was and how, how much time that was until we asked them to really just week on week document how much time you're spending on transit. So I knew they were spending time on transit, but we did not know how much or the depth or what are you doing when you're in transit. Now, this allowed us to then say, wow. If you're spending anything from 14 to 18 hours on the move in transit during the week from, from going to school, then isn't that an opportunity? Isn't that, is that an opportunity for me to engage with you as a consumer? Because that's enough dead time or downtime, so to speak. So what we did was then to sit with the, with, with the client, with a client would put a proposition on the table and shortly we're putting Wi-Fi in five matatus along Langata Road. And we were physically putting them ourselves, you know. And once we do that, then with the client, we're able to know, okay, when you enter the matatu or the transport vehicle, are you able to, the driver tells you, you know what, we have some Wi-Fi. Are you able to, you know, connect to it? You know, it's a proposition for, for the driver because like in my matatu, in my transit vehicle, you, you can do something with the time. And um, for the for the client, we're like you can sell data. For the consumer, you can definitely go online, do what you need to do. And so it was a win-win for all of all of all of us. So we moved from putting Wi-Fi in those five matatus into twenty matatus. This went to two thousand matatus, and it blew up into something else. I know over 10,000 matatus were done finally. But my point is, we just took time to, to talk to the young guys and just find out what's happening when you're on the move, when you're in transit. And they start telling us things we didn't know. Things we think we know, but we really don't know the true nature of them. And so for me, collaboration is really saying, 
Can I spend time to inquire? Can I spend time not to be too busy with, with other parts of the business? Because as entrepreneurs, we're always busy. Okay, where do I get the money to, to run this project? Okay, do I have the right people? All right, all right, all right, all right. But rarely do we then push the conversation around knowing our target market as much as we could. I'm not saying we don't, but as much as we could. So for me, and, and the business and what, I, what I've understood even over the years is I can collaborate with the consumer in three ways. One, by way of getting insights, that I'm able to work with a group of consumers who are my primary target market. They are innovators in what they do, uh, sorry, early adopters in what they do. So by talking to early adopters, then I can actually engage them to an extent that I'm not speaking to the laggard or I'm not speaking to the late, you know, late majority but I'm speaking to the guys who are quite excited about the brand. If I'm able to talk to the early, early adopter, then three to six months on, I can know what the other consumers are going to do. So insights become very key. But the second thing is with a good insight, so what do I do with that? I want to be able to sit with, with, with consumers to be able to know, does this strategy work? What can I do with this information? Can I turn it into an opportunity, a service, uh, an idea, a concept? And being able to sit with the consumers is exciting because we think consumers don't know much, but we've been had the privilege of sitting with consumers and developing solar solutions. So you can imagine the mama in, in Makweni, in, in, inside, inside deep um, in, 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 in Eastern province, but she's actually giving you a picture of, you know what, if you just took time, I can tell you how we, I can use this product and where I could, this is why I'm using it. And this is how it looks like. You know, we start, we start with the consumers to develop a solar solution and we've talked to, to this mama to actually help us know how do you carry it? Uh, how does it look? How, do you, would you, how would you fold it? Um, when you get to the market, how would you utilize it? You know, because we think that solar, I mean, she wants to be able to walk with it to the market, but she also wants to be able to use it when she gets back home. So we've been able to engage with consumers to innovate around solar, for example. But we know with a good insight and a good innovation that you want to take that to the marketplace as well. And so we've found ourselves that we can, over and above getting consumers to engage with, to get insights, and take that insights into an innovation process with the same consumers who have brilliant ideas, that I can also get another group of consumers and be able to have them tell me what is the real reason I buy this toothpaste or this brand of, of chocolate. And can I tell that, take that reason, and this is outside strap lines, guys, what can I take that, those reasons and share it with other consumers so that consumers are sharing my uh, the, the real proposition why they buy a product or service. So we've been able to collaborate with consumers again in terms of market engagement through word of mouth, and that has been quite ex extraordinary for us. I remember being able to sit with uh, young girls who, uh, well, I didn't really sit with them, but you know, we had a sanitary uh, pad brand who wanted to grow their sales. And what we did was get a couple of uh, um, girls together and we give them the product and said, you know what, over the next couple of uh, periods you have, could you use this product? Just use this one, but come back and tell us what works about it. They came back and told us, you know, one, two, three things. We took those same things and plugged it into another group of consumers who then again, now shared this with their peers and friends, shared this with their peers and friends. And I look back at that brand, it has grown in this market, outside above the line marketing, but really it's through collaboration with consumers. That's what I can say. I hope wow. I wow, there is too much loaded in there, man. Wow. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Are, you, are you getting something? Uh, let us know what you're learning uh, so far uh, from this guy. As in, even if I was trying to summarize what you said is so much nina there we go she's i remember your example with the jeans finding jeans that fit Absolutely. as a black woman is a nightmare and and yeah and that was uh, rachel frank. sunday very true nina yeah frank but you, you'd imagine that that is a big established brand that is selling that pair of jeans and yes. you know there are more resources than you and i would but that means that even for uh, an established brand or a young brand, we can always take time to learn 
and therefore innovate some solutions. Yeah. And therefore create an opportunity for sales, isn't it? Yeah. And I really uh, like that. Rachel uh, said, uh, that's very true, Nina. Uh, now be black and tall. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a triple nightmare. And uh, I, I have, oh yeah, wow. I feel your pain, Rachel. So um, being, being, being this black woman who needs this. So Jara, just let's just go deeper with this because I really like where we're going with this. Um, and we're saying, how exactly is my consumer using my product? Have I experienced them using it? And, and what do they call it? What do they name it? And I'm thinking of these all kinds of things. And I'll just speak education, for example. Right. A lot of our guys have gone digital. Have we gone in there and looked at the student utilizing my product in the home? Or have I understood what do they feel? What's their day in life? Uh, because I'm trying to bring your examples in the real day. How, when, right. What time do they wake up? When are they, uh, wh what kind of computer will they use? And, and when they use it, what are they feeling? What's the pressure on the parent to sustain this? And when I create my product, do I ask the parent, do I engage with the parent to say, okay, how would you like this to look like? How would you like this to look like? Is that, does that sound like what you're saying, where we're getting deep into it and we are talking with, the, with our consumer to produce the product that will last longer? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, you know, and, and, and you know what, um, you're right, whether it is, uh, you know, parents, whether it's uh, the teachers, whether it's the institution, let's say talk about education. I mean, really taking time to really understand what's going on. You've seen for a long time where maybe in Africa, where, you know, where our education system has been about, you know, go out, you know, get your education and get a job. But the jobs are more the formal jobs, you know, be an engineer, be a, but the creative spaces came up. And so now you have a, you have a, you have a, you have a, a, a son telling you, you know what, I, I, I want to be a mixologist. I want to be a, a DJ. I want to be a, a, you know, you know, I have something on TikTok here that is, you know, kind of work. I mean, you must take time to understand what's going on. So you and I have to stop, maybe you almost stop reject and reject systems that have not taken time to really engage with us. Why should I go to a school that has not taken cognizance of what my kind of future is? So why am I studying there? Why am I studying there if, if, if my future is going to be the arts and they're not going to offer the arts or don't think the arts are a good thing or, a, or, or the way of the future? So remember, we went to school and it had to be those set boxes of, of, of careers. But hey, you know what? I don't know if how we use our education. So I think I agree with you in terms of whatever we're doing, we have, whether we are planning for our, our products, whether we are in the point of doing some strategy work, whether in the, we're the point or where we have got an idea and we want to roll it out and we have some concepts that we, we can test them with consumers, whether we want to be able to, to um, we are ready with a, with, a, with a concept and we have produced it. Can I, can I give the product to a few consumers to actually sample the product and try it and tell me what works about it. So whole, through the cycle of production or of development of my product to the point where I've launched it, I wanna get consumer feedback. There's no brand that is, has made it. Even Coca-Cola is still spending time asking questions. So hence you and I wanna spend more time asking questions. Yes, get into my home, understand my lifestyle, understand the, the things that I, I'm excited about, you know. Um, when we we've started young people for quite a bit and it was quite a, a challenge when you find that even the church has stopped being relevant to them hmm. so my education i've given a thumbs down because i didn't find it relevant and my 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 faith where, where can i go to a church that connects with me because we're missing talking to the consumer so now that is changing, where we are seeing more uh, organizations and more, um, even the church is taking time to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to teach the word of God, but I want to know who you are. And so that when I'm delivering my word, I, I'm able to hit a sweet spot with you. So if the church is doing it, why not you and I? Yeah. Wow. Wow. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to Jared, and we're trying to go very, very deep to ensure that there is very clear points we get out of this podcast that mm -hmm. we can implement in our day-to-day -day life. And thank you, Jared, for just the way you're going deep and really giving real pragmatic solutions that we can use. And I like that you like looking at the young people. Question I have is, yeah. so this is so important. This is amazing to, to be able to engage with the consumer, understand where they are, really define their day, understand what's their pain points. My question is, mm -hmm. how come we feel as entrepreneurs this is too hard? This is too expensive. Um, I'd rather just pay my employees double the salary, but putting money behind research is why do I want to do that? I'm making the money, especially if the business is turning around money. Why is it so hard for guys to really focus? As in, you asked a very difficult question. Um, and as an entrepreneur, I felt, oh my God, that's a hard question. And this is a question you asked, you asked, what has your consumer said about your product in the last seven days? I thought right. to myself, do I know what they said? So why is it that Frank finds it hard to invest money behind insight? What do you think? Well, um, it's, it's a good question, Frank. And um, I think it's from um, maybe how we have been trained to do business, where we, we're looking at the other factors or the other key fundamentals and getting them in order first and foremost before doing anything else. And so we are so focused on those areas of, I need to get my, of course, I need to get my product ready. And, and I'm working on my product, but it's, 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 it's me, it's my idea. And I need, I, it's my, 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 my. So we are so focused on the my side of thing. And we are so focused on how do I raise money? But we are busy running Helter Skelter to try and get those things organized. But we know that we will, after we've organized those factors as well, I mean, there still needs to be a consumer that I need to engage with. So it's really that we are very, the way we've learned how to do business has been maybe a bit warped. Maybe we've not had the knowledge that says, you know what, pause and inquire about this. This will help your business grow. Or maybe we've not seen the benefit. I think maybe the benefit as well. I mean, if you, if you are uh, somebody who runs, who is maybe has a successful innovation based on the fact that you engage with the consumer and and you were successful in doing that that gave you money or grew your business or because you you had a school and you offered a certain particular uh program in arts and you saw the enrollment go up maybe you like okay that's interesting maybe where we see the benefit and if you took time to see the benefit then would know um but you know as people of faith, I, I, re I really want to go to this. And can I read this, Frank? Go ahead. And in, a, in a way to try and answer the question, let me let me look for a scripture, which is what we talked about. Um, this is the proverb in the book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-four, and verse three to six. Proverbs chapter twenty-four, verse three to six. And here I'm talking about the fundamentals of of why am I so focused on. On, on, on looking for the cash for my business and not focus on this other key resource that I really need. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 6, that, and you can use whichever version you have, but through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. So we see that to be able to set up a business, to establish it, uh, to give it a good foundation, then I need some knowledge, not only in running business, but then of my consumer, isn't it? So if I have a better understanding of that consumer, then I can, I can, be, I can have a good foundation. But then in verse four, it also says, by knowledge, its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And I like that because, Frank, it takes you back to the, what, why is it that um, I don't believe that uh, this is important? Well, the word of God even tells us, by, because I have more knowledge than have you know i'll be able to be successful we're all looking for this success and maybe we've been looking at it in other ways 
And we, the opportunity is then now for us to be able to say, if I spend more time with my consumer, can I be able to unlock a new way of doing something? Can I drive an innovation through this? And, you know, if I look at brands like M-Pesa, you know, you've grown, I mean, quite a ginormous opportunity that came about, but it was an innovation. Uh, the brands like Safaricom did not know that, you know, five, 10, maybe 10 years ago, maybe they did. Um, but then in verse five, it also says, but a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge strengthens his power. So this is about capacity, this is about fortitude and confidence that if I have more knowledge about this consumer, won't I be able to have more confidence to even drive innovation, even to stand in front of you know, my, my investors and be able to pitch my business much harder. But I think there's much power available by the fact that I know this person a lot more, right? Um, I've been in, 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 in boardrooms when, when we, we brought the, the, the understanding of the consumer the men in those boardrooms were able to make decisions. And it moved from, oh, I don't know what to do to, okay, guys, let's go this way. Let's invest here. And that was power. And in verse six, it also says that, for by, by, for by wise guidance, you can wage, war, wage your war. I don't know how you look at it, um, but by wise guidance, you can get, you know, wage your war. It also says, it, and in an, an abundance of, of counselors, there's victory and safety. But what I like about the waging of war, I took it as you can be competitive. So if the benefit of me understanding my consumer, then being able to innovate my, my product, know why they like it, why they don't like it, and be able to twist it here and there, and be able to put it in the market and be more competitive, then that's an advantage. So Frank, I don't know another way to answer that question, but I see that that could be, a, what I've shared could be some benefits of, of us really focusing on insights, where we're able to build stronger businesses that have good foundation, where we're able to, to be innovative, where we can put money in our pockets, where we can be competitive. And, 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 and that, 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 that does happen with insights. In fact, as you're sitting and we're, we're having this discussion, I have one of my clients who had a porridge brand and quite an innovative uh, young lady, I must say. And she said, you know what, I want to uh, have a product but it's targeting the middle class. I want a product that is maybe going to be able to address the mass market. Well, no, what can I do? So she had, an, she had a thought she, and she had an intuition. And so I want to say that insights will help your intuition or sharpen into your intuition or bring it to a place of action as well. So what we did with our client here, so she has this porridge brands and um, products that she, she thinks could work for this at the bottom of the pyramid. So we bring them in, we test it with the consumer. The, the consumer says, mm, I like it, uh, the color, um, the, 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 the taste is this and that. You know, we go through the rigors with the consumer. But then she also says, you know what, even as much as we have a willing formula, I have one more idea. Can I just bring it to the table? And she brought this idea and we put it in front of the consumer. And intuitively, the consumer said, this is good. And instantly, you know, the, the, the room lit up. And even the winning formula we had was pushed aside. And we focused on this idea that she had that then the consumer said, this is a good idea. Long story short, this is now in the stores being sold targeting the bottom of the pyramid, the mass market. But it was a confirmation of the insight, the, the intuition she had. So insights helped her take it home. Wow, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you are learning a lot. Thank you so much, Jared. Um, we are almost actually bringing this to a close. So if you have a question, um, I like that Nina says we have to shift our mindsets. We've got to think differently. And Roni says, preach, preacher, following closely, a uh, great conversation with very interesting insights. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, Roni, for joining us this evening. Guys, we are hosting uh, Mr. Gerald himself, as he, as he calls himself, the Gerald. So this is Gerald. 
and he's helping us. I really like something you're saying. You're saying it's not enough to sit in a boardroom and say this is where our consumer is. It's saying go to the consumer in his place where he's operating from. Engage him in his environment. Listen to him. Don't guess what you think he's thinking. Listen to him say what he's thinking and then determine that you're, you're, you're challenging us to develop intimacy levels with the consumer. That if you are a CEO worth your salt, you've got to be intimate with your consumer. You've got to really, really engage. But, but, but Frank, even more than even, yeah, you're right, CEOs. But you can imagine in terms of gov governance. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I'm, it's amazing that we can actually change our, our, our continent, our countries to be much richer, you know. I think in the session that I did, I did share about how much of us spend, uh, how many, how many uh, researchers we have, you know, um, in relation to the millions uh, of consumers that are, or population, that when we realize that we, we are so few researchers doing any form of research, and I'm talking about formal research, in terms of institutions, in terms of uh, uh, those who have studied research, you know, quite few. And now the challenge is that then we are always going to be receivers of innovation, receivers of products. We will always be consumers of products because we're not taking time to, cons to, to understand and then develop some solutions. I think if we can really stop all the, you know, all that we're doing around and just say, you know what, I want to take time, even in, go in governance, in, 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 in education and what have you, and understand where does do I, where is this African consumer or where is my consumer, and spend time to innovate solutions that are there. Then you'll be able to buy, sell me products that I want, not products that I have to get from the West. You know, I mean, enough is enough. I mean, we are, we are net consumers. Why are we net consumers? Because we're not asking questions. Why aren't we innovating on solutions? We can. Why are those who are doing innovations in Kenya and, uh, or in Africa now, why are they mostly foreigners? Why? So you and I have to take time to ask ourselves and get involved and get insights. And it's not as dramatic or as, as expensive as we make it look like. It is just for us to make provision for it. I mean, there are times we, we've, we've actually just go take time and go and hang out in Buruburu and uh, at a shopping center and see for yourself what is going on with consumers. What are they buying? What are they doing? Spending time in public transport. When you're there, seeing what's going on. Um, spending time, hang out in, in, in a home. One of my ambitions in life is, is really to, to go to Brazil and, um, and, and India and sleep in in a house of a regular, you know, mass market Indian or Brazilian, but just to really absorb what is going on in, in their lives. So you and I can always make those opportunities or trade-offs where we can actually get good, good insights. And I think sometimes also information is all about in front of us, is always around us. One of the things I do as, 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 a, as a habit is when I go into restaurants, I'm always engaging the waitresses or the waiters, not to get the numbers, but really, they see a lot of things. They see different consumers, different behaviors, different attitudes, day in, day out. So they are good people to be able to say, you know what, hey, if, if I did this, what, would, what do you think it would work? So there are people who in society are at the core of where our consumers are. Can we take time to ask them? but then also take time to ask the professionals. So if I'm doing a study, if I'm looking at education, I want to know what, what the professionals are saying. I want to really get into deep into that, isn't it? But then I also want to know what does the young teenager think about this idea or this concept and all of them in equal measure, not that one knows more than the other, you know? So, uh, you know, but I'm just saying, I just wanted to put that point across, Frank, that, we will remain poor unless we start asking questions and going and creating new ideas or relevant ideas that you and I would buy. Wow. 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 Guys, are you here? Are you listening to us? As in how long? The big question right there. 
how long will Africa remain subservient? How long will we just import ideas and exchange it with value that we've taken years and years to develop? How long will that happen? Can we pose, understand, be intimate with our consumer, be intimate with our experts, and begin to iterate and begin to create products? May that be our portion, guys, uh, for witty inventions. Uh, this is our season to come up with witty inventions. Wow, I, I am really thankful for the time we're spending here. And now, um, just a very quick one. At uh, BE, uh, as we do biblical entrepreneurship, one of the things that we go deep into is we want to understand what's our marketing plan based on the intimacy we develop with 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 uh, consumers we actually go into the word of god as in i always wonder jared how could god ask moses to send spies god knew why didn't he just tell them what to do it, at the, you will have said at the left corner there's this house at the right corner but he still sent people knowing everything he knew Right there, that one second, that millisecond there, you know what that is? That's biblical entrepreneurship. If you want to yeah. be part of biblical entrepreneurship, uh, we have uh, a link put it out there for you. Please feel free to join us. We actually have a seminar coming up on the, on the, on the what, what's that date? On Wednesday, what's that date? Uh, uh, where we will be talking about uh, biblical models for succession. And that's just part of the BE executive program. And some of us uh, uh, feel that they've grown in that place, but want to go into a coaching space and get somebody to help. I think one of the things, uh, uh, Jared, that you brought out is education is key. Right. And you, you, you went to Bible school. You've, you've went to do BE. Education is key for us to be able to get to where we need to build models. So. If you are one of those who is interested in learning more about BE, about Nehemiah Project, about our, our e-community, uh, please feel free. You're welcome to come to nehemiahecommunity.org and you will get to find out much more about uh, what we're talking about here. So welcome and thank you. Jared, you seem to want to say something as we come to the close of this. Did you want to say something, or, or do I ask you the next question? Let me ask. Let me ask a question. Ask a question. Ask a question. Okay. Hey, uh, yeah. Very good. Okay. I was going to say, Frank, uh, mm. what, what are you talking about? Moses and you know spies, you know being sent, and you know where weren't they just told, okay, we're here, there, a few this and that, you know, but I think then they wouldn't have appreciated, of or, or, or really appreciated what they have. I think the value of involving consumers and, and co-creating with consumers and collaborating with consumers is, at the end of the day, they'll, they'll have a lot more value for what they have because they co-created the solution. So mm -hmm. part and parcel of you, not you running and, and saying, you know, I've done it and here, take it. No. So God would have told them, yeah, I mean, just, just here it is. But he took them through a process of, you know, go in, discover, figure out, come back, tell a story. Okay, what did you see? Da, 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 da. That is part of the co-creation. And, and if God is doing it with us, hmm. you, and I, you and I have some work to do. So humility there, my humility. brother. I think you're saying that we need to humble ourselves and listen to our consumers. And, and co-create to them, create solutions together with them. And, and, and I'm thinking of Ronnie with a consumer with him in the kitchen, fixing a meal together and asking the consumer, is this what you like? And is it what you're experiencing? So I think we're being challenged uh, for, us, for, for us to listen much closer to this. So I, I, I had a question for you to finish this up. And, um just what have you guys seen as we close this covid season what's something that you can tell us to to do during this season uh about insight as we build and pivot our businesses in this season 
what's something you can say as advice to us that, hey, guys, I think this would be good advice for you in the season like this? I mean, um, that's a good question, you know. And, and my, my simple maybe thought around that is just to look. Just to look. Look around. Look. Read. Look. Ask. Look. You know, just by the fact that we are able, we have the time, things are a little bit slowed down, that um, we have time to engage, exchange ideas, challenge, that by looking then we are able to to have stronger, stronger, stronger views. I, I'm saying that because in, in the usual re- rhythm of things, we are moving quite fast, but we've been asked to pause. So if I'm thinking of a school, for example, say Nina, I mean, she has enough time now to think about her audience, not only this audience of today, but the audience in 2040, you know? So we might have a strategic plan for now, but what what is that? What does education look like in 2040? And, and, and be able to play with those kind of ideas. So it's really for even for me as a as a person, I'm trying to think where is a new opportunity? What are consumers doing now? Um, when I when I look maybe in 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 the in the, in the space now, I, I think there's more around Africanism still coming through for me. And so, for, so I, I'll, I'll be thinking it now. How do I then grow my business across Africa? So, Africanism has a, been a big trend that is grow, growing in and around Africa for quite a while. It's a tr- trend that has been really growing. So, my then will be look to to see what can I do with this time to how do I go grow into East Africa? East Africa community has been able to open up. How am I doing business there? Or um, uh, Africa is becoming flatter than it was before. So how am I going to reach a, a Nigerian consumer and this and that? So it's really to plan, you know, this is a good time to plan. Uh, I've forgotten a thought of mine that I was going to deliver, but um, by God's grace, it will come back. But I would say really, let's take time to look. Uh, that's what I would say, Frank. Wow, guys, we're coming to the end of this. This has been an amazing time and we are being told in very, very simple terms, this is a time to step back. The opportunity is here to really, really look, listen and learn from your consumer. Where exactly is your consumer? Let's co-create with our consumer. Let's listen to them. Let's look at them. Let's observe them. Let's ask the Holy Spirit what, what to interpret the, the, the situations that our consumers are in. And as we do that, then we develop strategies to answer to the insights we find. And uh, it's, we've been listening and talking to Gerard Owino, CEO of The Grass Company, uh, Mr. Gerard, any last words as we complete? We have been very, very thankful to listen to you in your A game, just uh, just living out your spiritual life today as you give value and dip. So yes, if you want to get in touch with Gerard and uh, if you want your business to start thinking around what uh, Gerard is. And Gerard, I just want you to talk about the methodology uh, of the grass company here as we close but the jared we know uh jared at grasscompany.co.ke you see his number there um if you want to have a conversation with him uh, specifically tailored to your business um uh, this is how you can get in touch with him but jared as we close just talk a little bit about the grass methodology as we close well i think like uh you know you use the word the term grass and, and grass is a, is, a, is a British slang term for a spy or an informant. So we work with a network of consumers who then we work with to tell us what is going on. And so working with this net- network of consumers who are early adopters, we're able to do a couple of things. And one that you may see there, we're able to involve them in terms of trends, consumer trends when it comes to planning, your planning process. So when you, th- and this is a good time for planning as well. You know, therefore, what trends are going on? Whether it is in music, where where's your where's your consumer? You know, what is your consumer listening to? What is go, where, what's going on with TikTok? And what's the implication of that to to you now? So, look at some trends. A second thing we do, and it's also good to do at this time, is look at your consumer context. 
working in our grass network, we're able to understand that your consumer is not homogeneous, that you have different types of consumers, that even if you say student, there are different types of students. And so you're always looking to understand how can I be, who's my primary consumer and how can I know them a little bit better? And so some of the things that you can definitely do is, is having sessions with, with them, you know, being able to invite them over or even on, over Skype, just to find out what's going on with you now, um, what's new in your world. Just ha- spending a few, some time with a few of them that can, can actually uh, give you more insight about them. But a third thing in terms of what we do is help in terms of strategy work. So like I said earlier, that there are clients who have a thought process and and they're saying, I want to go this way. So we we work with them to be able to put queries and and, and ask and answer the questions they're asking in boardrooms. You know, should I should should we go in this this direction or is this is this a concept that is good enough? Will there be uptake? from a conceptual perspective, and we're able to answer the question, what does a competitive landscape look like? So we're able to do that. So the, the, the strategy development part definitely becomes a key area where consumers are coming in to actually help respond. After a good strategy, you, you go into developing your, your concept or your product, and we're able to test this concept. You know, currently, we are working on testing uh, some food products. You know, uh, will consumers like them? You know, so our client has gone quite, quite uh, made some steps to develop a, an idea, but then package an idea into a full product and that we're able now to sample consumers. So we take time to test that. But even after testing with a the consumer, then we are able now to implement it. And what we do around implementation, again, is field testing of products and service to know the real uptake and, and connection moments that the product may have. In that place, we also then use word of mouth to take this product to the consumer. And so we also do some market activations where we also engage with consumers. But for us, it's really from all the way from planning to execution, we work with the consumers to actually deliver that. Amen. Fantastic. So uh, this brings it to the end, uh, Gerard. Uh, very. Uh, really, I'm just getting warmed up, Frank. I'm just getting warmed up. We can do this all night. <laughs> uh, bro, we've got you to know, I'm, ready so I'm ready and then now you can ask hard questions, you know. But but it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay. And for listening, really, it's been a it's been an honor to be able to engage with you where you are. So thank you for also being present. Very good. So you're talking to your consumer as well. So thank you for doing that. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you're listening to us from Africa or here in Kenya. Um, those are my contacts, frank at nehemiahproject.org. Feel free to shoot us an email if you're interested in biblical entrepreneurship, if you're interested in, in um, uh, coaching, uh, business coaching. We, God has given us a grace in this. And we are seeing a lot of uh, success as we do this work. So feel free to contact us for biblical entrepreneurship, for, for, for uh, coaching uh, based on the word. And it's been a pleasure to have you here uh, as we bring this to a close. Thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you for listening to Gerard. And, and feel free to link and, and get to know us more. Gerard, it's been a pleasure. Uh, this coming from the highest office of NMIA, uh Project International, as I'm sitting in today for Patrice. Um, thank you for taking your time to spend with us. God bless you, sir. And God bless you guys for being with us. As we bring this to a close, please remember to keep it here. We'll come to you every other, in fact, we come to you every other day on one topic or another as we keep engaging and doing our best to educate and bless, be a blessing to our consumers. God bless you guys. Um, and God bless you, Gerard, once again. Au revoir. Bye-bye.